Welcome back to the King's Podcast, The Wellness Day with Lucky. I'm your host, Esther Lucky. Today we are joined by Dr. Rakesh Rai, hepatopancreatobiliary surgeon here at King's. And he'll be taking us on a deep dive into pancreatitis. From what I hear, it's a common condition that mostly goes undiagnosed. And he's here to tell us all about it. Doctor. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you. Hepatopancreatobiliary surgeon. Let me start there. What what does that entail? It's such a mouthful. Yes. So, you know, in short, if we call it HPB surgery, this is relatively a new branch or new subspecialty of general surgery. Earlier, what used to happen if you go 10, 15 years ago, most of the general surgeons will cover part of the treatment of liver, pancreas, biliary tree. Slowly, the treatment and especially the surgical management of the disease related to liver, pancreas, gallbladder and biliary tree started developing because people started realizing that there are some uh, really challenging uh, disease, challenging scenario, which is very difficult to manage unless you are especially trained, mm -hmm. you have the, that kind of infrastructure and medical technology moves very fast. That's how the hepatopancreatobiliary surgery, which involves surgical management of liver, pancreas, gallbladder, and biliary uh, diseases mm. developed. Okay. So it's relatively new subspecialty in surgery. All right, and that's why we're here today to talk about pancreatitis. Yeah. What is pancreatitis? So pancreatitis is basically, if you define in short, it's inflammation of the pancreas gland. Mm. Uh, you know, most of the public will uh, know about pancreas gland. Uh, and most of the people will know about its, you know, relative role as well. Mm -hmm. But when this gets inflamed, then we call it as pancreatitis as a disease. Okay, all right. And uh, what is the main cause? The most common cause of pancreatitis uh, in most of the countries which you will see will be either gallstones or alcohol. Mm -hmm. But in countries where alcohol is not that prevalent, gallstone definitely is the most common cause. I've read somewhere that there is acute and chronic pancreatitis. What's the yes, difference? Between? That is very important to understand. So we are talking about pancreatitis as inflammation of pancreas, mm -hmm. but this inflammation can be of two different variety. One is acute pancreatitis and the other is chronic pancreatitis. Both are completely different disease mm -hmm. with a different prognosis. In simple terms, acute pancreatitis is a situation when you're any reason but your pancreas gets inflamed if it recovers and once it recovers your pancreas become completely normal mm -hmm. so during the time of inflammation you may have a severe injury to your pancreas but after recovery pancreas almost comes back to normal and acute pancreatitis can be episodic you had one episode of pancreatitis you are fine you may have another episode of pancreatitis after some time if mm -hmm. the cause is not treated now in chronic pancreatitis the main issue is that the inflammation is ongoing all the time. So I, I understand it's painful. So the pain is just ongoing. Pain is in both the situation. Mm -hmm. But the important thing is that chronic pancreatitis does not become all right in between. It may have ups and downs, but the inflammation all the time goes on mm -hmm. throughout your life. And that's why... Unlike acute pancreatitis, damage done in chronic pancreatitis is damage done. You cannot recover from it. Very fast. It. Exactly, exactly. All right. That is very important uh, in, uh, to understand. Wow. Okay, we'll get back to that. So, uh, who's at risk of pancreatitis? Are children susceptible to it as well? Or? Pancreatitis can affect anybody. It happens in children as well. It's slightly less common than in adult. But uh, we see like we see gallstones in children. So gallstone is one of the most common cause of pancreatitis in adults. It can cause pancreatitis in child. And there are a lot of other causes which uh, can cause pancreatitis in uh, pediatric patients. Like certain drugs, they cause pancreatitis. So if the child is taking that kind of drug, mm -hmm. he can have pancreatitis. Wow. Okay. And uh, is this condition, pancreatitis, both acute or chronic? Are they life-threatening? Yes. So if we talk about our threat to life, then it's acute pancreatitis in the short term. Uh, the acute one is more or less threatening. Yeah, because acute pancreatitis varies in severity. Uh -huh. So you can have a very mild acute pancreatitis. You may have some pain in your tummy. You don't even report to the doctor. It settles down. You don't know you had an episode of acute pancreatitis. From that kind of mild uh, situation, you know, the, the, there are patients who develop severe abdominal pain and they go into multi-organ failure. 
and they die from acute pancreatitis. Oh. So acute pancreatitis can be life-threatening in a very short period of time, while in chronic pancreatitis is slow and progressive damage to your uh, pancreas. At which point it can become life-threatening? Yeah, it can become life-threatening if, you know, in long term, yes. We were talking about a, a pediatric pancreatitis. Yeah. Is it possible to describe us the pain experience Yes, so, as told by your patient. Yes, so pancreatitis pain, you know, we are talking now about mainly acute pancreatitis pain. Mm. Presentation will be same. The characteristic of pain is same in adult and pediatric patients. Mm -hmm. Now, the most typical description of pain in case of acute pancreatitis is pain which starts in the upper abdomen, mostly in the middle portion. Mm -hmm. Pain severity can vary, as I said, from mild to very severe pain. Mm -hmm usually associated with nausea or vomiting mm -hmm. and one of the features which makes it very characteristic that most of the time this pain will start in the upper part of the abdomen and it will radiate to back mm -hmm. it's like a st somebody is stabbed through and through wow. so people will come complain that i started with this pain and now it looks like the pain is going to my back as well mm -hmm. so that is the typical description of pain of acute pancreatitis associated with nausea and vomiting all right, doctor, thank you. So, uh, my next question is, I've watched this podcast, especially this episode on pancreatitis, and I've realized I have such pain, and I come to you. Yeah. But you cannot just start treating me, you have to diagnose. Exactly, exactly. How do you do that? See, whenever a patient comes with what we call as acute abdomen, and he's got some kind of abdominal pain and other symptoms related to abdomen, they have to go through a diagnosis. One of the most important things is to start with the detailed history. As I said, you know, character of pain in different diseases is different. So if we get this typical history that the pain started, upper abdominal, going to the back, you can have a suspicion that patient may have mm -hmm. acute pancreatitis. And then there are blood tests. So the second stage will be where we'll do a specific blood test, which are marker of acute pancreatitis. So there are certain markers in the blood which you can measure. Mm -hmm. And if they are high, if they're abnormal in their range, you can again suspect that this patient is having acute pancreatitis. Mm -hmm. Then you want to know, okay, this patient is having acute pancreatitis. How severe is that? Mm -hmm. Then there are other assessment tool. You know, you will do a CT scan. There are other different blood markers. So you calculate a severity score mm -hmm. to assess how severe the pancreatitis is. So there are multiple ways. First thing is the diagnosis. The second thing is assessment, assessment of severity of pancreatitis. Mm -hmm. So we do that uh, radiologically and with the blood tests. Okay, so now you've confirmed the patient has pancreatitis. Yeah. What do you do next? What's the treatment for so pancreatitis? So, acute pancreatitis, when they present, first thing you try to find out what's the cause. There will be certain patients where you will never be able to find the cause. They do not have gallstones, they do not have a history of alcohol, you know, the common causes, mm -hmm. they do not have anything. Okay. So, we call them pancreatitis or unknown etiology. There may be a group of patients where everything you have done, you know he's got pancreatitis, but you don't know why he developed pancreatitis. Mm -hmm. Treatment part, there is no medicine for acute pancreatitis. You know, it's not that you give a medicine which stops the inflammation of the pancreas. So pancreatitis is treated in two parts. First is the symptomatic management, you know, control of pain. If the patient is, has got severe pancreatitis, they go into multi-organ dysfunction. So you support each organ, things like that. Once the patients come out of all this, okay, or when you find a good window of opportunity, and if he has a specific cause like gallstone, then you treat that so mm -hmm. that he doesn't get another attack of pancreatitis. And that involves removing the gallbladder. Gallbladder, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. But otherwise, you just, it's a symptomatic management of pancreatitis. There is no specific drug. So, does removing the gallbladder actually treat or cure the pancreatitis? It will cure the pancreatitis completely. Mm -hmm. You will have never have another attack of acute pancreatitis mm -hmm. if the cause of pancreatitis was gallstones. 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 Okay, what about the uh, chronic? Yeah, so now even in acute pancreatitis, you may have something else. You may have alcoholic pancreatitis. Mm -hmm. Okay, alcohol can cause acute pancreatitis as well. Then you have to stop drinking alcohol. If you have drug-induced pancreatitis and you know this is the drug he's taking, that is the cause of pancreatitis, you have to stop that drug. So, these way you can prevent the further episodes of acute pancreatitis. Mm -hmm. In chronic pancreatitis, as I said, it's an ongoing, yeah. slow, continuous inflammatory process. So, you cannot stop that. You can reduce it or you can, you can decrease the rate of progress like 
alcohol can give rise to chronic pancreatitis. Right. So if they stop drinking, you know, the rate of disease progression might slow down. But you, can, but you cannot reverse it. it. Yeah. And no, you can't stop no, it. You can't stop it. So how can one manage this if there's no cure for chronic pancreatitis? Yes. So in chronic pancreatitis, it is very important to understand the rate of progress, which varies from person to person. Mm -hmm. Some patients with chronic pancreatitis may may have, you know, long time, like a, almost like a normal lifespan with intermittent attacks of chronic pancreatitis. In some patients, chronic pancreatitis progresses fast. In some patients, it's finally leading to cancer of pancreas, okay? Mm -hmm. So when we treat chronic pancreatitis, we again treat the result of damage of pancreas, the effect what's happening. Mm -hmm. Like pancreas is getting damaged, they will have enzymes deficiency. They will not absorb the food, so you give them enzyme. Oh. Pancreas is damaged, you will have insulin deficiency because insulin is secreted from pancreas. Mm -hmm. So they will start developing diabetes. You treat the diabetes. So you're not treating the pancreas, you're treating the consequence of chronic pancreatitis. They will have pain, you do pain control. There are certain stages where we do surgery as well for chronic pancreatitis. How often with chronic pancreatitis does one get these uh, attacks? Can I call them that? What we call is acute on chronic pancreatitis. So you have chronic pancreatitis uh -huh. and suddenly the pain becomes severe. Wow. Or you have you are pain free, you have chronic pancreatitis, you are pain free and suddenly when you start getting pain. These are called acute episodes on underlying chronic pancreatitis, which varies, uh, you know, in different persons. So that's what we assess, how severe you are, how frequently you are getting episodes, what can we do to control that. Pancreatitis and pancreatic cancer, what's the connection? Yeah, so chronic pancreatitis is a risk factor for pancreatic cancer. If you see the people who have chronic pancreatitis, they have got higher probability of developing chronic uh, pancreatic cancer mm -hmm. than the people who do not have chronic pancreatitis. Any person can develop pancreatic cancer. A normal person without any pancreatitis can develop a pancreatic cancer. But mm -hmm. people who have got chronic, pancreati chronic pancreatitis, they are at much higher uh, level of uh, risk of developing pancreatic cancer. Anybody who has chronic pancreatitis to have ongoing checkups? Exactly. Because two reasons. Because first thing is chronic pancreatitis is progressive disease. Mm -hmm. So you need to be in regular touch with your doctor mm -hmm. so that you manages, he manages you well, your, you know, the pancreatic insufficiency demand, your insulin demand. Mm -hmm. And the second thing, he always keeps an eye because he understands that you are at risk of developing cancer. What's the worst that can happen if uh, somebody who clearly has pancreatitis goes undiagnosed and doesn't uh, get any treatment for the condition? So, you know, as I said, Acute pancreatitis people, unless you have a very mild pain that day, the pain is severe, you will present to the hospital and you will get diagnosed that you are get, yeah. getting acute pancreatitis. The problem is that acute pancreatitis gets diagnosed, but sometime, as I said, you know, you may not find the cause or you have not done the detailed investigation to find the cause. So the cause remains untreated and the patient keeps on getting the attack of acute pancreatitis okay that's one situation in chronic pancreatitis many people they waste a lot of time in 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 getting diagnosed because chronic pancreatitis pain may be very mild you know or so they just refuse to go to the hospital they do not consult a doctor because they have a mild pain then what happens once the pancreatic damage is severe they are diagnosed as diabetes or they lose weight because of enzyme deficiency. In that way, they are diagnosed. So you, they present with diabetes, and once you start investigating why he's got diabetes, you find he's got chronic pancreatitis. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. And there's a treatment for the diabetes, is up the symptoms for the pancreatitis. Yeah, if chronic pancreatitis, uh, if they have a diabetes, mm -hmm. you'll have to treat the diabetes because now he has developed another disease. All right, doctor. It was lovely having you no here. Problem. Thank you. And, uh, ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Rakesh Rai pato pancreato biliary surgeon here at Kings. To get in touch with him or to book an appointment with him or to know more about pancreatitis, you can find him here at King's College Hospital in the Bar Hills. You know our number, our website, get in touch there. Until next time, goodbye.